an elevator starts from rest at level X and accelerates upwards with an acceleration of A. A red ball is on the floor of the elevator. So as the elevator accelerates upwards, its velocity would increase. Since the ball is in contact with the floor of the elevator, the ball would also have the same acceleration and velocity as that of the elevator. When the elevator reaches level Y, the ball is thrown up as we shall see in the next step. At position Y, the red ball is fired upwards. Meanwhile, the elevator continues rising with an acceleration of A. The ball reaches the top of its flight and on the way back down, it would meet the floor of the elevator which is rising upwards. In this lesson, we will learn how to determine the time of flight of the ball in an accelerating elevator and you will find that we will perform exactly the same steps. That is, attach the frame of reference to one of the bodies, consider that body to be at rest, and obtain the relative displacement, velocity and acceleration of the other body, and substitute that into the equations of motion. So exactly the same steps. To make the problem more familiar, similar to a problem we had solved earlier in this series, imagine that a yellow ball is stuck to the floor of the elevator. So the yellow ball has the same upward acceleration as that of the elevator. Now we will use the concept of relative displacement, relative velocity and relative acceleration between the red and yellow balls in order to compute the time of flight. So this is very similar to a problem which we had earlier solved. Just the way it is framed is different. Let's call the red ball ball A and let's say that the red ball is projected with a velocity of VA with respect to the ground when the elevator was at position Y. So VA will be the initial velocity of ball A when it is fired upwards. At that point in time, that is when the ball is fired up, assume that the elevator is moving with the velocity of VE. But the elevator speed will keep increasing from that point on as it is accelerating upwards with an acceleration of A. The relative velocity of the red ball with respect to the elevator VA with respect to E is by definition VA with respect to the ground minus VE with respect to the ground. And rearranging we have VA equal to VE plus VA with respect to E. So let's say that the red ball was thrown upwards with a speed of 7 meters per second with respect to the ground. Then VA would be 7 and assume that the elevator speed at that time was 2 meters per second. Then VA with respect to E will be 7 minus 2 or 5 meters per second. So the ball is thrown at 5 meters per second with respect to the floor of the elevator which itself was moving at 2 meters per second. VA is the velocity of the red ball with respect to the ground. The moment the ball loses contact with the elevator, its acceleration is minus g in the downward direction. Now let's analyze the velocity and acceleration of the yellow ball which we assume has stuck to the floor of the elevator. Let the yellow ball be ball B. The velocity of the yellow ball will be the same as that of the elevator with respect to the ground since it is stuck to the elevator. 
let the initial velocity of ball B, that is, at position Y, be VE at that instant. So the velocity of ball B will be the same as the velocity of the elevator. The acceleration of ball B will be the same as that of the elevator which is A upwards. Now we have both the velocity and acceleration of ball A with respect to the ground and the velocity and acceleration of ball B with respect to the ground. So we have to find out the relative velocity and acceleration between A and B. We attach the frame of reference to A, so we assume A to be at rest and we find the displacement, velocity and acceleration of ball B with respect to ball A. The velocity of ball B with respect to ball A turns out to be the negative of the velocity of ball A with respect to ball B or the elevator. Notice that B is the same as the elevator E since B is stuck to the elevator floor. So we use B and E interchangeably. And the acceleration of ball B with respect to ball A turns out to be G plus A. The initial displacement of B with respect to A would be zero since they start off together. The final displacement of B with respect to A would again be zero since they end up meeting each other. Now we plug these values into the second equation of motion in order to obtain the time of flight of ball A. And remember that since ball B is stuck to the floor of the elevator E, we can use B and E interchangeably in our formulas. The initial and final relative displacement between the balls A and B is zero since they start off together and finally end up meeting. Now plugging in the relative velocity and acceleration of B with respect to A, we obtain the time of flight as 2 times V A with respect to E over G plus A. And if you look closely, this formula is very similar to the time of flight of a ball thrown upwards from the ground with an initial velocity of V. That time of flight is 2V over G. The upward acceleration of the elevator is A, so the greater the acceleration of the elevator, the shorter is the time of flight. And if we consider A to be zero and the velocity of the elevator also to be zero, so in other words the elevator is stationary on the ground, then we obtain the time of flight as 2V over G, which is the same as that taken by a ball thrown upwards to land back on the ground. Also think of the way A will see B. Then A would assume itself to be at rest and A will think that B is initially moving away with the speed of VB with respect to A, but an acceleration of G plus A pulls it back towards A. The time of flight of a ball thrown upwards in an accelerating elevator can be solved using the concept of relative motion. The relative initial and final displacements would be zero. We obtain the relative velocity and acceleration of the ball with respect to the floor of the elevator and substitute these into the second equation of motion in order to obtain the time of flight.